Hey guys, the flexibility guy, Coach Elia here. Welcome to this new episode of the top five questions. People have asked me and a special guest five questions. And today I'm gonna be answering to those questions with a really special guest. She is Anna coming from Germany and she is a skilled and passionate hand balancer. The flexibility guy, Coach Elia. Hi, I'm Anna and I'm working as an handset online coach and today Ilya and me are going to answer five of your questions about handset training. So get ready to start because we have five really interesting questions to answer. Let's start with the first one. The first question is this, how do you stay focused during your practice? All right, so here it really depends on what you mean with focus. Do you mean external distractions or kind of internal distractions? Because when we're talking about external distractions like social media, other people, I kind of feel like a, a social media, but not, not just scrolling through my feed or something. Just listen to podcasts, li listen to people speaking, just the radio or something like that, just keeps me in the loop because Usually my sessions are pretty long, like three to five hours, for example. So if I don't have something like to rest my mind or, or something, I just, I think I'm gonna get crazy. So it's better for me just to have something to listen to or something like that, that keeps me in the zone. But, uh, for example, that's for uh, uh, external distractions like uh, the radio, the podcast, etc. But when it comes to people, for example, I don't like people like uh, nearby when I do handstands because here we're talking about handstands in specific. For example, if I have to do uh, flexibility sessions or uh, strength session, I love working out with others. But when it comes to handstand training, doesn't work. I have to be alone. I, I prefer to be alone in my own zone, focused on my training. That's my ideal space. Then talking about like uh, internal distractions, that's kind of a, a, a different topic because it's not about the things you have outside, but the things you have inside your emotions etc and uh, thanks to the as i said the podcast and the, the kind of external distractions let, let's call them that way i try not to listen too much to what i have inside because there's good and there's bad and if the bad of me comes out it really kind of uh, uh, fucks up the entire session. So I don't want that bad to come out. I try to keep calm as much as possible and focus on the right things. So for example, if I have to do something, I, I focus on that something, that's it, all right? I just focus on the technique. I kind of constantly think about what should I do? What is the correct technique of this thing I'm trying to do? And I just think about that and about the external things that uh, I'm listening to, etc., to keep my mind in the right zone. So I'm focusing on the technique and on other things. If, if the set or if the things are not going extremely well, I have something to distract my mind. Not, the not, not about the technique, but about my internal emotions. So I want to keep an inner peace as much as possible. That's how I kind of uh, go through my sessions for external distractions and internal distractions to keep me focused. Speaking of focus in your training, I think it's important to note that it's much easier to keep a certain level of focus. And the harder part, part is to achieve it in the first place. So what I think is very important is the warm-up. An ideal warm-up for me looks like that. Five minutes of light cardio training where you just bring your body temperature up and make your body ready to move and also get rid of your everyday life, all the thoughts that are in your head. And then you move on to the handstand specific warm-up. And you can kind of get into a warm-up flow that helps you to focus on your body and connect with your body and let go of all the thoughts that are distracting you and make it easy for you to achieve focus which means 
turn up notifications. Anything that distracts you could be your phone, social media, upcoming calls. If you're interacting with people, let them know you're in your training now and put on some music maybe. Everything that helps you to get the focus because once you have it, it's much easier to keep it. Another thing that's important when we speak about focus in our training is the level of difficulty. It should be challenging, but doable. If it's too hard, you're going to fall all the time. It's pretty hard not to get frustrated and to keep a good focus. If it's too easy, it's kind of boring. So it's also easy to lose focus. So try to work on a level that's challenging, but doable for you. Second question, how to deal with motivation and getting stuck with your practice, for example, when you don't have enough time like you used to have. Uh, now, talking about motivation. Motivation, uh, I, I, like uh, I talked about it many times, like motivation is overlooked. You don't need motivation. You need a plan. You need a plan to follow. When you go to school and you wanna, I, I don't know, you wanna get a PhD, they don't like uh, they, they don't tell you all right man you got to be motivated to do that no man you got to study to do that to get a phd you got to study you, you got to have a plan you you can be motivated a lot of people are motivated nowadays to get a phd if they don't study though they won't get a phd no way no way absolutely no way all right so the same here if you want to uh, achieve something you gotta have a plan now um, talking about time limitations like I don't have enough time like I used to have like it doesn't make a difference like you you gotta have a plan it's not about motivation you do you want to achieve that something all right just make a plan that works for that something of course having less time like you used to have sucks that for sure uh, like a it's something that, all right, I have $10,000 and I have a thousand. Well, that sucks. That sucks a lot. And now here it's the same. If you have less time, of course, that sucks. But you can like uh, uh, make like a budget. If you have less money, you're going to be thinking like, all right, I got to um, kind of change my budget expenses, etc. Here it's kind of the same. You do want to um, stop. All right, don't think about, all right, I, I was used to have more time, but uh, think about, all right, now I have this block of time. Now I can do this, all right? What should I do with this time? What, 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 where should I invest my time, my energies, etc.? Should I kind of uh, um, cut down my uh, rest periods? Should I do more sets with uh, less uh, rest time, etc.? Find a way that works for you to do kind of the same amount of work if you can, like you used to be maybe rushing a little bit the workouts, doesn't matter, you have to do that, all right? But it's not about motivation. It's, it's really not about motivation, it's about the plan, it's about the dedication, which is really different from motivation, all right? That's my, yeah, that's my main idea regarding motivation. Enhanced and training, but uh, now, of course, this kind of uh, um, episode is about enhanced and training, but Guys, it's about everything, like in life in general. I don't know, I'm not the kind of person who wants to give you life advice. <laughs> Completely not. I'm not the right kind of person. But I do think that, yeah, having a plan, it's much better than like waking up and saying, all right, I want to do that. Next day, you wake up and all right, I don't want to do that anymore. So you're, you're going to you're gonna get that. If that's the, the way you're living, all right? You got to have a plan. Doesn't matter how you wake up. You follow the plan. That's the idea. Okay, so just because you train less doesn't mean you can't make good progress. First thing I would do is set a realistic goal for a specific time frame. Maybe you have to adjust your goals because you train less now. For example, if you train once or twice per week only, it would probably take a lot more time to get to the one arm headset, for example. So maybe you just reach for another goal or you expect it to take a lot longer than you used to when you trained like five times per week. Second thing is your program. That should be as ideal and as specific as possible for your goals. As you have very limited time now, you don't want to waste your time with exercises that don't help you achieve your goal. So ask yourself what exactly brings the results I want to see and what is just a nice add-on 
or what would I like to do, but is not really helpful for me to reach my goals. And the third thing I can recommend is to get a coach who will help you with the first two steps and also to put everything in perspective. So is your progress really that slow at the moment or do you just have unrealistic goals? Is your program ideal? What can you change to make progress also in your limited time? Third question, what would you have loved to know earlier regarding your training? Now, uh, here for me personally, I would say patience, but I'm not talking about patience patience like a specifically for an exercise or something but uh, in general because uh, we all want to achieve something like we all want that skill we all want that something we all want to uh, make gains and that's okay uh, as I said for the second point you got to have a plan and of course you ha you want to have something to reach that that's what wakes you up in the morning it's part of what wakes you up in the morning but if that's something becomes the only thing that wakes you up in the morning like you wake up and you say all right i want to do this handstand skill or that or that or that and you live and kind of you live for that something and you uh, kind of, it's like your uh, your happiness depends on that something that sucks that sucks because the days the months the weeks you're not good at that something. You, you're not gonna be happy. And uh, in life, there's much more than like practicing, etc. Of course, my life, I love practicing. But uh, as soon as I figured out that, yeah, I love practicing, I shouldn't be kind of uh, uh, depressed because I'm practicing. And something isn't getting the, the like uh, the traction and the uh, kind of results I want. It, it, I can't be depressed about that. I have to be patient. I have to enjoy my practice. So I would say that earlier, much earlier, <laughs> if I had the chance to go back in time, like uh, Hanston specifically, of course, I would change a lot of things of my past, but uh, Hanston specifically, I would meet the old Aelia and I would say, all right, Jerk, like be happy, enjoy your practice. Things will come, things will come with time. Enjoy your practice, be happy. Just don't, don't overthink it, all right? Be happy, enjoy your practice because one day, you won't be able to do that anymore, all right? So enjoy the time you're spending here. Enjoy your time now. That's what I, yeah, that's like what I would love to know earlier in my training. Okay, there are many things I would have loved to know earlier in my training, but one of the things is to develop a good understanding of the training, the process, the position itself. So get an understanding for the fundamentals such as anatomy and biomechanical stuff that will just help you to understand what your body should do and also what you should train. And that's the second point, um, to train not only what, what's fun and what I would like to do, but what is necessary for me to improve. And the last thing I learned during the years, which is not only relevant for my hands-on training, but also for other training such as strength training or contortion training, is to get a coach to help me and show me the way. I used to think I don't need a coach because I'm already doing a lot of stuff right and I'm already making good progress. But when I got a coach, my progress was usually a lot better because I just had the outside perspective of someone telling me what I could train next, what are my weaknesses and what else I can improve because there's just another person involved that knows, obviously knows a lot about that topic and always helped me to achieve the next level. Question number four, what's the most important thing to think about during a handstand position? Uh, I would say, where you feel the weight in your hands. A lot of people like think about their hips, a lot of people think about their shoulders, their trunk. Like uh, I've been teaching to hundreds of people from all around the world, both in person, live classes, online classes, etc. Uh, a lot of people come to me and they say, oh, well, how's my uh, shoulders, how's my hips, how's my uh, feet, how's my trunk, etc. 
and uh, like a, um, the, they tell me, uh, I don't know why I can't stay there. Like my shoulders seems to seem to work perfectly. My hips seems to work perfectly. Like wh what am I missing? And I always answer, like, are you thinking about where your weight is in your hands? Is it in the center? Is it like well balanced in the center of your hands? Are you relying too much on your fingers? Are you relying too much on the base of your palms? Because that's crucial if you go in a handstand position, all right? And as you are there, you feel like uh, you're relying too much on your fingers or you don't feel the control of the position in, like, uh, in the center of your palms, you like uh, you have a pretty bad time balancing your handstand because it's gonna be tough as hell all right a uh, handstand is standing on your hands all right so the hands are the key to a very good balance all right you are still handstand position so you always want to make sure that you're feeling the pressure in the middle of your palms i always teach this this way all right so fingers straight weight in the middle of your palm especially here on the base of your index finger that's where you want to feel the pressure as you are in a handstand position all right so that's point number four most important thing in a handstand how you feel the weight in your hands the answer to that question, in my opinion, is the good old push harder. So in your handstand, the shoulder position is crucial. And especially in the beginning, you probably have to think about elevating the shoulder all the time. If you don't, you probably fall back. Also on other levels, for example, if you want to learn to have one arm handstand, you have to remind yourself all the time to keep pushing and also to develop the strength required to hold that position and to have that shoulder stable. Question number five, and the last one, is of all essential in learning a freestanding handstand. So, if you start from zero, yes, absolutely, it is essential. And uh, I do want to, uh, like, uh, I do want to say that because a lot of people just, when they start learning the handstand, they say, all right, I do want to achieve the freestanding one, all right? So I'm gonna try just to kick up and hold, but, if you don't have a, uh, an assistance when you start, this won't work, all right? Because it's really difficult. Of course, I know, I know a lot of people, few people, a few people um, have mastered the handstand position without a wall. And they might advise you not to use a wall because you have to balance in the middle of the room. You gotta get used to the, uh, to the sensation of not having a wall, etc. So a wall, is essential, my opinion, to create your handstand line because a wall is straight and to like uh, stay in a handstand against a wall, you have to be straight. If you're not straight, the wall will teach you how to be straight, all right? With the correct ex technique, etc. Of course, I got a plenty of videos about that. I, it's not the topic of this question here, but the wall teaches you how to stay straight. And also, it gives you an important assistance because as you go into the balance position, you don't have to find the balance kicking up, stopping the momentum, all right? You have to kick up and then go against the wall and then from there you can control the way you're going into the balance position which is going to be much easier to find all right so that's the main idea of using the wall and uh, if you're afraid of falling towards your back the wall is the only thing you can use to go into the handsome position and actually stay there because if you're not able to do that how are you supposed to hold that handstand position if you are afraid of falling towards your back? First, you can injure yourself because if you're not sure about a certain position, you're not going to make it. And second one, as you go into the position, your brain starts to understand how to stay in the handstand actually. All right. So it's more about a, 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 a motor learning thing. All right. So if you go touch the wall, you rely on the wall, you stay in the position and you stay there, your brain understands how to do that. 
all right but if you just kick up and fall of course you're gonna your brain gonna get something but not too much not as much as by as like a kicking up against the wall and actually spending time there all right that's the main idea so yeah definitely a wall is a really good tool to develop your handstand position so the answer is no you don't need a wall to learn a handstand but it's definitely a very very helpful tool and you will save yourself a lot of time by using the wall the reason for that is that you want to spend time in the right position and accumulate time and you just have the chance with the wall to make it a little bit easier for you and to work on your level you actually can achieve because when you just kick up and you can't balance yet you have like a quarter of a second in the, that position and with the wall you can collect, collect a lot more time so be smart and use the wall whenever you need it to get more time under tension all right guys so that's all for this episode of the top five questions today i had the pleasure to be with anna all right and i hope that you enjoyed the content so far i really invite you to check out her profile on instagram on youtube on her social platforms i'll leave a link in the description down below so check her out thank you so much for watching guys leave a thumb up if you enjoyed the content and see you in the next episode of the top five questions with the next special guest if you got any idea like uh, all right alia why don't you ask i don't know who all right write the name in the comments down below because i'll be really happy to consider another guest for the top five questions for whatever copy you want to listen to all right guys Thank you so much again. See you next time. Bye.